Hello, my friends. How are you? We're back for another video. I didn't mean to yell at you. I just, I got a little overstimulated, I guess, and I just started yelling at the camera. My apologies for that. That's a little much coming into a video, isn't it? Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, today, we're going to talk more about why Swift is the greatest trucking company on the planet. <laughs> oh, I'm having a good time over here, though. Um, sorry, I, I say stuff like that because it's weird how triggered people get at the sight of another man enjoying himself. Just based on the company he works at. I don't know. People are strange out there, my friends. But uh, so let me first say uh, for anybody uh, out there, uh, Swift does not pay me for these videos. Uh, Swift has never said a word to me about these videos, except the one time where they're like, hey, you maybe went a little too hard in that video. Could we maybe settle these problems on the phone but I still felt justified about that video because you know what that video did for me when I got real mad at Swift it got shit done so I can't feel bad about that um, but they're not paying me they're not asking me to promote the company or anything I came over here a lot of the reason was just to see if it was as god-awful as everybody says it is or if that's just people just repeating the same things they hear over and over and don't worry I get it I understand joking about trucking companies have you ever seen those fucking prime dorks those guys are fucking dorks yeah so I, I understand that. But since Swift has this stigma about it, I wanted to come over and see for myself. And that was one of the one of the reasons I decided to come over here. So, uh, yeah, they're not paying me. They're not asking me to say nice things or anything like that. I wish they would. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, you know, hey, Swift, do you want to just give me the title to the truck? And I'll just say really nice things about you. Can we make it that deal? Let's do that. But I'm not here for your referral bonuses. I'm not here for anything. I wanted to see Swift. We're here and we're seeing Swift. And that's the fucking point of the video. So uh, before we get into it, I got a couple people to thank for uh, super thanks on the last video. I appreciate every one of you, even if you don't send me money. But I still like when people send me money. That's pretty cool. What a world we live in, right? Um, but yeah, I appreciate everyone that subscribes and views and most of the comments. Most of the comments. Uh, the likes are cool too but we got um stir lazy stir lazy i feel like i'm being baited into saying like some crazy shit right now uh or maybe that's actually their name i don't know but uh stir lazy i'm tr i've repeated this over and over in my head i'm like that's not some like racist shit or anything is it i don't think it is uh stir lazy i feel like there's a joke there two dollars though two dollars from stir lazy and then here is matty here is matty with ten dollars on the last video i appreciate you guys support so much thank you for uh helping me out over here on my humble little channel. So uh, we're going to talk today about some more stuff I sort of experimented with with Swift because that was sort of the point also. Swift is so massive that I, I don't go out of my way to like push buttons or tr see what I can get away with necessarily. But I figure, you know what, part of the reason I came over here was to take advantage and if possible, leverage the uh, things that Swift has going for it in my favor uh, because it would be kind of silly for me to uh, not do that. Um, I lost my train of thought again. Anyways, uh, we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Uh, the last video really uh, brought out some old grumpy Gus's, didn't it? We had some curmudgeons in the comment section that were really, really uh, grumpy about uh, what I was saying. And if you guys didn't catch the last video, the main point of it that I was talking about is in uh, Southern Oregon, uh, there's a lot of truckers that treat the shoulder as a travel lane um, and I was trying to get some clarification because there's no signage or anything like that that says trucks slow trucks use the shoulder or anything and in all my experience as a truck driver the shoulder has never been a travel lane but in that very particular part of the country a lot of people do it a lot of people act like it's normal but even worse than that is a lot of people get really pissed off uh, when you uh, you don't do that and I was trying to have the conversation um, but you always get the grumpy bastard that uh, is mad because you're having the conversation right of course I'm gonna make fun of stuff on my channel that's what I do um, but somebody had commented uh, that the that, that they that's old school that's what they used to do so they could get three trucks deep across the whole interstate passing each other and uh, the slower guy would always take the shoulder and I was listening I was actually reading the comment going okay I mean I understand it's probably an old school thing but he did that thing that 
well, that a lot of assholes do. And he goes, you younger guys would never understand. Shit, I'm not a younger guy. I'm goddamn, I'm, I'm a million mile driver. I ain't no young buck out here anymore. Those, that ship is sailed, baby. That was a long time ago. But I didn't appreciate that part of the comment necessarily. And it's like, why not just talk? Why not just have the conversation about the reasoning behind what something is without finding a way to get your shot in at the end, you know? I don't understand that rationale because that's not how you win people over when you're making an argument against what they're saying. That's not how you do it. So I don't know what it is with that, man. I just, just imagine that you, you know, you, you hear about like somebody driving on the shoulder and you get all pissed off, you know, you're like, Ugh! Back in my day, boy, back in my day, we drove on the dadgum shoulder. That's what we did, and you young bucks just wouldn't get it. I don't understand the reasoning behind all that. I don't. I hope you guys could hear me okay. But uh, anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, the, the a lot of these Gen Xers sure have gotten pretty big for their britches now that they're allowed indoors before the street lights come on, haven't they? They're all fired up now. They're living high on the hog uh, or whatever it is that's going on with these guys. What are you so mad about? Like, I've just, I was just asking the question. What, we can't ask the question? It's not clearly marked up there right i i don't know and uh, in all all my experience in truck driving uh, i've been told to drive the truck where the fucking lanes are clearly marked i don't know i just this is the first i'm hearing of we just make up lanes now and if you don't like it motherfucker it's because you're a rookie it's just i've never heard that before that's all i'm trying to tell you uh, but uh uh, and then somebody uh, asked me who the fuck I am to advise people. I'm no one. Really, I'm just a guy that talks on the internet. If people want to drive on the shoulder, that's their own fucking business, I guess. Just don't kill anyone while you're driving on a not clearly marked traffic lane, please. That makes the rest of us look bad. Holy shit. Um, and then in, in one part, I talked about... Uh, at the bottom of the uh, mountain over there, some trucker had smoked his brakes from riding his brake pedal all the way down the mountain, I would fucking assume. And uh, a lovely commenter put it all on me and said if, uh, oh, this is kind of a thing I'm doing in this video too because somebody was real upset in the last comments. They're like, stop clapping. Maybe sometimes I get a little bit excited and I move my body in weird ways. Do you fucking mind if I make my goddamn video here? Holy shit. But anyways, I was blamed for the guy smoking his brakes at the bottom and told that if I would have had my CB in my truck, I could have prevented this. So there you have it, folks. Somewhere along the lines, somebody found this man qualified enough to uh, have a CDL, said he was proficient enough to drive a truck to have the license to do it. And then some company also assumably gave him a road test, handed him keys to the truck and said, hey, you are competent to drive the truck. Then he goes off the mountain smoking his goddamn brakes and everybody's looking at me now apparently. The whole world's going, why didn't this guy trucks get on his CB and tell him about his smoking brakes? And now we know that I, me, personally, I am the key to that man's success and failure out here. And I have uh, clearly failed my task of making sure he knows how to drive his own goddamn truck. So fuck me and, 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 and fuck that guy too because he don't know how to drive the truck, but mostly fuck me because that's my goddamn fault that he don't know how to drive the truck. So there you have it, folks. I feel better. I got all that out of my system. Um, but I got another funny story before we get into all this Swift stuff too. Um, <laughs> sorry for, for uh, laughing at, at the stuff that goes on in my head sometimes. Uh, <laughs> there's there's people that love me and hate me out there, right? And there's people, like people get le legitimately pissed off in the comments. They're like, get to the point, stop talking about all this other stuff. And then the people that get me, they'll kind of jump on that person and be like, all the other stuff is why we're here. We're here to listen to this fucking crazy middle-aged man that locked himself in a truck for 10 years, just ramble about whatever the fuck is on his mind. So uh, thank you to everyone that gets me, I, I need it I, I i need somebody on this fucking planet to understand me god damn it uh what are we talking about i got mad at another trucker today i did um i was uh pulling off the interstate on a exit ramp a clearly marked exit ramp not one i just made up on the fly but it was an exit ramp and you know when you come to the end of an exit ramp most of the time there's a stop sign sometimes you'll have like a yield sign who cares about all the variations of off ramps does anyone really give a fuck as much as i apparently do i don't know but this particular one had a stop sign at the end i was going to the pilot that was to my right so i'm sitting at the stop sign with my right turn signal on 
come to a complete stop without smoking my brakes. It was amazing. I mean, it was a true act of fucking just, it, it was just incredible. I belong in the Pro Trucking Hall of Fame for managing to do all that without somebody on the CB telling me how the fuck to do it. Uh, God bless this guy trucks. What a fucking legend that man is, right? I think we can all get behind that idea. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so I came to a stop and there was a truck coming under the underpass going the same direction I am in the travel lane that I was going to be in. And uh, he decided that he would stop his truck where he did not have a stop sign and flash his lights at me. It, it, telling me to go, right? Oh, how sweet of him. Thank you so much. Um, and I refused. You know why I refused? Because I, I, I'm a dick. I'm a dick. And that's why I refused. I just sat there. And uh, I'll actually tell you why I refused in a second, but it's partly because I'm a dick, but not, not, that's not the whole story. Um, anyways, then he starts waving his hand out his window for me to go. And I said, no, I shook my head, no. And I put my hand out the window, waving at him very aggressively to go while yelling, get the fuck out of the way, move your truck. And then uh, he decided to go and then he waved at me as he uh, drove by. Here's what I was, frustrated about he never had a stop sign to begin with and uh, as a person that's lived on the road for the last 10 fucking years uh one thing interesting i found about our interstates our roads and our highway system we already have predetermined rules for how everything works and this one is going to blow some of your guys's fucking minds uh the stop sign uh means to stop and then you proceed when it's clear i had a stop sign he did not have one now if we just start making up rules as we go, like driving on shoulders or whatever crazy shit we want to make up, uh, then that's when chaos starts to happen on the roads. So because that man decided to just stop and flash his lights and tell me to go, I'm sure a lot of you take that as him just being polite, like, hey, he was just stopping his truck in the middle of the fucking road to be polite to you. I did not take it that way. We have to follow the predetermined rules of the fucking road. What are you doing? That If we don't, it all turns into fucking chaos. And if I get myself killed out here, my wife's going to be very, very upset with me. So I'm trying not to do that. Can we follow the rules of the road? God damn. Anyways, what are we talking about today? Swift? Oh yeah, we love us some Swift around here. We'll, we'll definitely talk about them. Um, so anyway, like I was saying earlier, I'm not here for your referrals. I'm here to just tell you what I observe at Swift. Good, bad, whatever the fuck happens, I want to tell you about it. And I was worried at one point that I was going to get fired because on that video, I probably did go a little too hard on Swift, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, but like I said, it did get results. It did get shit done. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. This is big business, baby. We don't have time for your fucking feelings right now. We got shit to do. So maybe I don't feel bad about that one. I don't know. I have no fucking clue. Um, but I'm not here to profit off of you going to Swift is the fucking point I'm uh, trying to make. As a matter of fact, there's somebody demanding to see my check stubs, to see my settlements every week. And uh, no, the answer to that is fucking no. Why are you asking to see another man's money? If I would understand if I was trying to sell you on the company, like come over here and get me that referral bonus, then I actually think I would owe it to people to show them everything about my finances having to do with Swift if that's what I was trying to do. But since I'm not, that will remain my business. I can give you a ballpark figure like I've done in videos, but because there's so many variables in trucking, I'm not able to tell you straight up how much you'll make at Swift. We all fucking know that. Um, anyways, uh, there's only one person in the world that sees my settlements me. There's only one other person in the world that is uh, privy to my finances, and uh, that would be my wife. So uh, I, if you really, really want to see my settlements, I would suggest that you hock to it and spit on that thing, because that's the only way you're getting access to my finances, okay? So I hope that puts that to bed. You cannot see my settlement. What the fuck kind of weird request is that? Like I said, if I was trying to sell you on the company, I would owe that to you, but I'm not. I don't give a fuck where you work. So anyways, um, we had a, uh, a situation, not a bad situation, but a situation where I thought it would be really cool to experiment with uh, Swift a little bit. And uh, sort of what I was talking about earlier, where we're, we can take the, the pros of Swift, the good things about Swift, some of the reasons why I came to 
over here and leverage those things in my favor. And the perfect situation came up and I decided let's just fucking try it. Let's take the hit if it goes wrong, but let's figure this out. And what had uh, happened, some of the reasons I said I wanted to come to Swift was because they've got a lot of drivers. They've got a lot of freight and you'll see why that matters to this story. They've got terminals fucking everywhere, right? So I got sent a uh, load yesterday um, that was, uh, there was too much time on it, right? So it was a preloaded uh, trailer uh, going about roughly 700 miles uh, due tomorrow. I picked it up yesterday due tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. So anybody that is a trucker knows that that's way too much time. Uh, anybody that's not a trucker, you can probably figure your days at about 500 miles per day. So if I picked it up yesterday, there's no reason why I can't deliver the thing today instead of waiting tomorrow till tomorrow afternoon and it's a, a live unload um sorry i know i get a lot of non-truckers here i'm not talking down on you which means i have to back my ass into a dock and wait for some forklift operator with a shitty attitude to unload my fucking trailer um and i didn't necessarily like the load but i was in a rough spot for one um because uh what the fuck am i trying to say i, I need script writers or something but they would be real useful if i knew how to fucking read wouldn't they um what the hell was I trying to tell you guys? Um, I was in a spot where I looked at the load board, nothing. I did the request available loads macro, nothing. This was probably, I could have pushed my luck further and just rejected the load, but it gives me a chance to do a little scientific experiment. Um, and it was probably about the only load I was gonna get out of there. So I went ahead and accepted it. Okay. I didn't say a word to Swift. I went ahead and accepted it. It was about 90 miles away from me. I went over there and I grabbed it and I made sure I was hooked up to that trailer before I made any decisions about what I was going to do. And uh, when I got hooked up to the trailer, that's when I got a hold of Swift. And I asked them, I said, hey, I'm going to be a full day early on this load and uh, I can actually get it. We're going to Portland. We're going to the Portland area, right? I can actually get it there tomorrow, all right? Can we either get a different appointment for tomorrow afternoon, or can I T-call it at the terminal and maybe you guys could give it to a local driver or something to do that next day because I'm not gonna make any fucking money. I'm gonna be there by 4 p.m. today. So I've got till 2 p.m. tomorrow. It's 4 p.m. tomorrow at best before I even start rolling again. And then you're trying to get out of Portland at 4 p.m. That whole day is wasted. It's gone, right? And obviously I didn't wanna do that. And if I get it done today, I can get it done before the uh, pay period ends. Remember when I first came to Swift and there was some confusion about the pay period? They guarantee they'll pay you through through Tuesday, whatever you're done with by Tuesday. There's a good chance they're gonna pay you for everything you get done by Wednesday. And then you've got a slim little bit of a chance that if you get something done by Thursday morning, they may cut off the payroll there. And then I, my, my settlements uh, normally hit my bank Saturday mornings. Uh, that's when I normally see them. Um, so, uh, that's how it works. So today being Wednesday, I'm going to get it in there. I get to do two experiments in one, hopefully on this one. Um, but the, there were, uh, the point I wanted to make is there were a lot of real angry hillbillies mad at me because I said I wanted to know definitively when the pay period ends. Josh, you're thinking like a goddamn company driver. Uh, if you're going to be an owner operator, you don't know when the pay period ends that doesn't make any goddamn sense uh, yes the tried and true tested business method of the owner operator i don't know when the fuck i'm getting paid that's not true at all that's fucking crazy but there were a lot of people really pissed because i just said i want to know when the pay period ends imagine making such a simple request and people being angry about it <laughs> well that's wild so one of the experiments is i'm gonna get it done by the end of wednesday i'll check on our owner portal tomorrow and if it's not showing on this this uh, pay period then I'm gonna call payroll and ask them to put it on there for me um, we'll see how that all shakes out but I think I, I it should just work out without having to make a phone call or anything and the reason why that's important is because I just took home time and I'm not a fan of not making any fucking money so I really would like to get this load done and make me a little bit of money this week how about that how about that but um, so anyways where were we so I asked Swift if uh, 
we could uh, get a new appointment, if I could uh, T-call it, which uh, basically means drop the trailer in our, in our yard, at our terminal, and uh, somebody else, most likely a local driver, can go actually make the delivery tomorrow. And I was really, really fucking nervous to actually make this request because uh, I have worked for a lot of companies that will verbally abuse you for uh, trying to take care of your own business, for trying to do what's best for you. Now, I know that I didn't do necessarily the right thing because I accepted a load with too much time on it, but I really wanted to try this experiment out. And if I had to take the hit, I had to take the hit. That's just the way it goes, right? And uh, I got to... One thing I really love about Swift is you can message the uh, load planners directly. So that's who I asked. And uh, within a few minutes, I got a message back. She tells me, hey, uh, we can possibly uh, T-call it, but check back with me in the morning. We'll see if we got something, another load that we could get you set up on right afterwards. Uh, because if we don't have you a load, I, they, she didn't go into details like that. That's just my head working. But she said check with her in the morning um, and uh, see what they got. So yeah, I got up this morning. Um, I was sitting at a, a pilot for uh, fucking 45 minutes. I was just trying to get 20 gallons of diesel to get myself out of California. You know, get out of California. Then I can pay, you know, a buck less or whatever it comes out to. Who fucking knows? And that's all I was trying to do. I was at this pilot for fucking ever motherfuckers just taking their whole 30 minute breaks parked three trucks deep on fuel island my motherfucker man so i decided to message them then again and follow up and i said just that i said hey just following up with our conversation yesterday about t calling this load i'm going to be almost a full day early on this load and i'd prefer to get my truck moving if i'm being honest with you and uh a few minutes after that guys a few minutes after that uh they had uh, set it up so i could do that i think i was saying earlier that I've, i work for companies that will like verbally abuse you and and like make you feel bad for looking at your own business so i was nervous to send this message you know, and then I really thought about it. I'm like, what are they going to do? Because I asked, right? All I'm doing is asking. They're, they're going to take me out behind the woodshed. I doubt it. So I might as well just ask. The worst thing they could say is no, um, or, or they could be really having a bad day. I don't know. And they'd be like, who the fuck requests that stupid? Why'd you even take the fucking load in the first place if you didn't want the fucking thing? Which was all possible, I guess. I've never actually been talked down on with any kind of bad attitude with from anyone at Swift. Uh, so I got to give them props on that. They're obviously doing a really good job with their HR department or whatever, where they're they're telling their people in the shop or on the phone or in the terminals to, hey, let's not be shitty with truck drivers. And guess what? I'm not shitty with them either. I'm always a pretty damn professional. I mean, as professional as I can be, right? Uh, but uh, anyways, they came back. The point I'm trying to fucking make is they came back and said, yep, go ahead and drop it in the terminal. And uh, then a few minutes after that, I got a load that's sitting up there in Portland. It's not going very far but it gets me to a load that's picking up tomorrow that's uh, getting me the fuck out of here. So by 2 p.m. tomorrow, uh, which is when I was going to deliver this, I will be long fucking gone. I will be down the road, still generating money with my truck, and like I said, leveraging that Swift network to my advantage. I know maybe that's not that exciting to a lot of people, but to me, I think it's a really cool thing. Now, it's not something I want to abuse and just start taking loads that don't make sense and then throw it on Swift and say, hey, you figure out how to get the fucking thing delivered. This was just one of those scenarios where it's like, eh, the freight ain't looking too good where I'm at. I got to take something. I got to get the truck rolling. Let me grab it. And then after that, I'll ask, and what's the worst that can fucking happen? And it turns out um, that Swift also apparently is aware that they are huge and they have ways to move freight. So that is all taken care of. And I'm glad it worked that way uh, because I'll be honest with you guys. I am pleasantly surprised with my experience at Swift. I really, really am. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not here for your fucking referrals. I don't care. Um, I thought that I was going to come here. It was going to be a shit show. I was going to make about five, maybe ten, if I was lucky, videos about how shitty Swift was before they told me to bring the truck back. They're, they're voiding my contract. Get the fuck out of here. And it actually has not gone that way. Um, of course, the money could be better. The money can always be better, right? Um, but as far as getting shit done, 
like finding solutions that work for everybody with Swift being the size that they are. There's a lot of scenarios where it's, it's just to ask the question, just ask the question and see what they say. Now I, on my end, have to be accountable, liable, everything for making sure that I'm doing what I'll, I say I'm going to do. But, um, but as long as I'm doing that, then I think we're fine. You know, as long as I'm not just putting them in shitty positions because I can't wake up on time in the morning, which was a little bit of a challenge this morning, if I'm being honest. I've been playing college football like fucking crazy on my PS5, and I probably, for the last three nights, have stayed up way too late doing that. But we, that's okay. That's okay. I slept in a little bit this morning <laughs> to make up for it. Um, but anyways, uh, communicate with them. Do what you say you're going to do. And gotta be honest, this has not been a bad fucking experience at all. That's all I got on the topic. Bye now.